Awesome. <laughs> no, thank you guys so very much. Thank you guys so very, very much. You know, I it's crazy the way life takes you different ways. You think you're going one way and you're really, God's got you on a completely different path. So, uh, me and me and Kevin Kidd, we go to Christian rap concerts anytime they're around. Like we just, if Lecrae or KB or any, like we'll travel. Last time we went to Kentucky to see one. We just, it's just our thing. It's what we do. And uh, but the thing is, we always have something that happens on these trips that is just eventful. Um, last time we ended up getting lost in Cincinnati, going the. The, the wrong way. I'm the navigator, so I'm on my GPS trying to tell Kevin where to go. It's going like the road is going to a Y. <laughs> Kevin's like, which way do I go? I said, you got to go that way. Like he's supposed to know where we're going. Um, before that, uh, we had actually, the GPS was taking us to, we thought, a concert in Columbus. Um, we ended up going to it, told us to turn right into this parking lot. And uh, so we turn right. We're trying to find a parking space. We see all these people that are walking in that we think is to the concert. And we start noticing, like, they're dressed in all black with makeup on. And, and some of them are not wearing, like, a lot of clothes. It was really weird to us. And we're about to, to get out of the car and go into this place. And uh, and we realize that we are actually not at the concert. We are at a horror movie convention. And we almost walked right into it. Yeah. Could you imagine the look on our face when we walked into, the, <laughs> into that? And, uh, you know, God's, God's got a plan through, through all of it. And uh, so often we don't know why the road leads us to where to where we end up. And that's kind of the way it was with, uh, with Jesus in the Bible, with, with him being born. We didn't know, at the time, they didn't know why he was here, what was going on. They just knew he was the Messiah. They didn't know that he was going to do all these things and, and that, that he actually did the way that it went, just blew them away. So, so we're going to kind of talk about that today. Um, it's going to be a short, shorter sermon, but you know the the crazy thing is, is I, I had said if you guys want to wear pajamas today, that's completely fine, and nobody's wearing pajamas. What is it? <laughs> oh, did you? Awesome! I'm so proud of you. That's amazing. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and pray and get started. Uh, Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for my brothers and sisters in here. Uh, thank you for the joy that comes on a day like this. Uh, where, where we celebrate you being born and all that that meant um, for the world, all that it means now. Our lives are changed because you came into it, Lord. Uh, don't let us ever forget that. We ask that you speak to us through your word. Uh, speak to us loudly, clearly. You are our Father. You are our Jesus. And we love you. We praise you. We give you all the praise that we could possibly give. Uh, amen. So... We often hear the same words being used this time of year, right? Love, peace, and joy. We, we see them everywhere, right? Uh, why, 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 do we just, why do we just say it like it's always been, been said? Uh, is it something that looks good with like a hashtag in front of it? You know, like hashtag blessed? You see that all the time. Do people just say love, joy, and peace all the time without knowing what it is? So this morning, we're going to go over love, peace, and joy, and what it means for us this time of the year. So, so why love? If, if I were to, to talk to someone who wanted to know why we celebrate Christmas, but they had never heard of Jesus, I would no doubt tell them what John 3.16 says. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. I would go ahead and tell them that Jesus is that son. And seeing us in our need and needing a savior, God sent him to rescue us. I would tell them that he stepped down from his throne in heaven to walk among us. That he who made everything, had everything and needed nothing. 
became a newborn babe, born, in a virgin, born to a virgin and placed in a manger. And I don't know if we really understand this. The King of Kings and Lord of Lords was placed in a feeding trough. A feeding trough. Anybody who, who, you guys know, you live on a farm, chickens, goats, you know how dirty feeding troughs are? Slobber, leftover food, it's just, it's, this is where the creator of all things was placed. I would tell him that, that he was born in Bethlehem and that he would later grow to be called, one of his names was the bread of life. And something that's really kind of cool about that, being born in Bethlehem, is Bethlehem had a lot of bakeries. So Bethlehem actually means house of bread. So Jesus coming from Bethlehem actually has a really cool uh, meaning to it. I would also go and tell him that he lived a sinless life, that he taught us the right way to live, that he suffered abuses, ridicule, and mockery, and went to the cross for us. And I would tell them that because he loved us, he did that willingly. John 10, 17 to 18, it says, The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life, only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. And I don't know if we, we grasp that either. Like it's one thing to be helpless and hopeless in the hands of men that are trying to harm us. It's another to have full authority and power to stop it and go anyway. That's, that's love. That's love. I would tell him that after that he died and rose three days later. And because of that, because of that love and the sacrifice he made, we now have peace. That peace is with God. And, and we who have accepted the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, we've been atoned for. And he no longer sees the sin that we walked in, no longer sees the, the dirtiness of the way that we've lived our life or even the mistakes that we're going to make in the future. But he sees the righteousness of Jesus. Our hearts are no longer separated from our creator. Peace reigns in our hearts and lives instead of the turmoil and the the enmity with God that we once had. So love and peace are a very real part of the Christian life. It's not just something we say. John 14, 27 says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. So we, we now have the Holy Spirit who lives in our lives. Comforts us, empowers us to live the right way. We now walk and talk with Jesus and we look to him as our friend. And, and I would tell them that because he is our friend and we have peace with God, we now have joy. And this joy was proclaimed by angels on this day that we're now celebrating. Uh, Luke 2, 9 through 11 says, And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And I think I'd, I'd probably have to tell them that this angel was not talking about happiness. This, this joy is so much different, so much deeper, so much more permanent than happiness. Happiness is fleeting. Like it comes and goes on a whim. We all know this. It, it changes our circumstances. We were talking about the, the bangles earlier. You know how quickly I can be happy and then not be happy? And the, the Bible went, later went on to say that, that wise men sought him out and brought him gifts. And, you know, I think, um, I think wise men today still seek him. I think if we were, we were wise, we would seek him. And I think that if we realized what, that the only gift that we could ever give him is our heart, it would really make our walk with Jesus a lot easier when we see that that the grace and the peace that he's already given us is, is 
more than we could ever, we can never earn it. It's just given, and we have to just give him our heart. That's all he wants. That's all he'll ever want. So the band's going to go ahead and play, and then uh, I'll be up to, to close us out.
real, tangible way that you are walking beside them, Lord. And we love you and we praise you. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. All right. Merry Christmas, guys. I love you all.